Hey everyone, so um, we've come to the end of engineering week. That would have been February 17th through the 23rd of this year, 2019. If you've been following me on um, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, you may have noticed that I posted some pictures up there. If you haven't gotten a chance to see those, go ahead and take a look at my pages. Um, I've added, uh, added content on the, there, um, captions on the, there, to give you some sort of idea as to what was going on in the pictures. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the engineering week, just a little bit to kind of sum things up. So why do we ha actually have engineering week? Well, the purpose of having engineering week is kind of to inform the public um, as to what it is we as engineers do. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people using the term engineer very loosely. For instance, you may have heard like sanitation engineer, or you may have heard people using the term engineer for the purpose of, let's say, um, just saying that you're doing something engineer related. And so what a lot of people don't realize is that the engineering profession, you actually, you're required to have a license in some cases, in other cases you're not required to. But the cases where you need to have it, you can actually get in some pretty serious trouble for using the term engineering, okay? And so what this video here is about is about when using the term engineering goes wrong, okay? And so for this video in particular, um, what I'm actually uh, focusing in on is a story that I found on a local TV station here in Atlanta about a um, individual that used the term engineering, um, may or may not have been practicing engineering, of course, that will all come up in the lawsuit. Um, but the whole thing is, is that it appears that, and notice I said it appears, it appears that he may, he and the company he was working for may have used the term engineering in such a way that could cause them to uh, be in some serious trouble. So take a look at the rest of this video. I'll try to explain as much as possible, give you information as to where to find certain pieces of in, uh, information as it relates to the lawsuit. Uh, but again, look at the video and hopefully by the end of this you're a little bit more informed as to um, when to use the term engineer, when not to use the term engineering, and making sure that you stay out of trouble uh, when it comes to, uh, again, using the term engineering. All right? Here's a classic example of when uh, using the term engineering goes wrong. So I was watching um, WSB TV here in Atlanta last week. Um, it was around about five or six in the afternoon. And I saw this news story about a high-rise condominium. Uh, it's called 1280 West. And according to the newscast here, and again, this information is coming from WSB TV. So the residents of the 1280 West high-rise condominium, they're suing their homeowners association after paying $5,000 to fix their crumbling balconies. Uh, the residents said that they were forced to pay whether or not their balconies were damaged and the class action lawsuit, in the class action lawsuit, the residents said that the HOA hit them up for the cash rather than making the insurance pay for it. Now, that's where the lawsuit began. However, though, as with most of the lawsuits by any good lawyer, um, it may begin there, but of course they start looking for anything that can help to build their case. And when I say anything, I mean any anything. So remember, um, this is where the lawsuit began. But it eventually got to this. The attorney, which is the person, uh, which is the law, which is the attorney for the um, those in the clash action lawsuit said that the HOA, HOA pardon me, relied on the building's building manager's um, chief engineer to make the decision about how the repairs should be handled. Okay. Now, here's the thing. So Jim Strickland, who is the WSB reporter, said that was not the only problem. What did they end up figuring out was that the engineer was actually an imposter. Now, this is Jim Strickland's words, not mine. And so 
again, not only did they depend on the uh, chief engineer to figure out, um, you know, what was going on or whether they should uh, change the rails out or not, but they found out that the person wasn't actually an engineer, according to him. Uh, the person's name, uh, the chief engineer, quote unquote chief engineer, is Joe David or Joseph David. And supposedly, again, according to Jim Strickland and his story on WSBTV.com, supposedly, the um, according to what he found, the, he said that supposedly the engineer was licensed and had 20 years of experience, or at least that's what the management company was uh, indicated. However, though, uh, according to the lawyer, he's not an engineer and he's not qualified to do this kind of work. So again, this is where using the term engineer goes wrong. This whole lawsuit began with the homeowners um, being upset uh, that they had to pay $5,000 to uh, replace their rails. And again, you're dealing with, uh, I'm, I'm assuming a pretty decent lawyer because what he did was he went and found anything to go and support, you know, not having to pay for those rails. And if this turns out to be true, they, he may have a case that the person who said that they should replace the rails wasn't even qualified to begin with, which means that that homeowners association could be in some pretty serious uh, problems. So here's what we're going to do. Um, let's go and see what we can find about um, our engineer or our chief engineer. And we'll uh, see how that information that we found matches up with what uh, Jim Strickland found and what the uh, attorney found. And then we will talk a little bit about the laws here in Georgia as it pertains to uh, practicing engineering and what you need to do, whether you need to be licensed or not. All right, so after a little bit of searching on the internet using um, search engine, I was able to find the company, the management company for uh, 1280 West, and apparently it's this company here. And on their website, this is just a screen capture of their website. This is their information about Joseph David. And it does say that he is the chief building engineer. Now, interestingly enough, later on down below, they actually indicate that he has a state license to be a electrical contractor which by the way, these two are not the same at all. So it's kind of interesting because they gave him the title of building engineer, but at the same time, they listed that what he was licensed for in the state, uh, what he is licensed for in the state, pardon me, is as an electrical contractor. Nowhere on the page does it indicate, for instance, any sort of a background in engineering, for instance, uh, going to school or having take the professional engineering exam and being licensed to be a professional engineer. Uh, what they do show, however, is that he worked at some uh, other prestigious uh, locations um, around uh, Atlanta. And so again, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting that they focus on the prestigious locations that he worked at. Uh, but doesn't exactly show um, any of his qualifications other than that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, showing that he's a qualified to be an engineer. So let's take a look for Joseph David and see what his licensing uh Current situation is in the state of Georgia. And so in order to do that, we have to go to the Secretary of State of Georgia, this is the website, in order to find that information. So I've already typed his first name in here. His first name is uh, Joseph. Last name is David. And so let's go ahead and do that search and see what we come up with here. All right, so according to this, there's a few different Davids, uh, Joseph Davids. Um, the one that we're looking for, though, according to 
The uh, Beacon uh, Management Group's uh, website said that he's an electrical contractor. And as we see here, none of the others are electrical contractors. So this is most likely the person. And as you can see here, it does say that he's an electrical contractor and his information is uh, current. If we go over here now and we put my name in, and so we do a search. You'll notice that I come up here and it says actually that I'm a professional engineer. So what this is saying then is that I'm actually uh, more qualified than he would be in order to do um, the engineering uh, according to All right, so if you look here, you'll see that it says professional engineer. So clearly then he is not a professional engineer. He's actually, and oops, go back over here. He's actually an electric con electrical contractor and not an engineer. So it appears that the news story is correct. He's not an electrical, or pardon me, an engineer. And so if he did make some sort of an engineering decision, uh, when it comes to replacing those rails uh, at the 1280 um, West Condominiums, uh, apparently then he is in violation and he could be charged with uh, practicing engineering without a license. If you look here, you'll see that it says professional engineer. So clearly then he is not a professional engineer. He's actually and oops, go back over here. He's actually an electric con electrical contractor and not an engineer. So it appears that the news story is correct. He's not an electrical, or pardon me, an engineer. And so if he did make some sort of an engineering decision uh, when it comes to replacing those rails uh, at the 1280 um, West Condominiums, uh, apparently then he is in violation and he could be charged with uh, practicing engineering without a license. There are some exceptions when it comes to uh, the need for engineering license, licenses when practicing uh, engineering. Uh, in order to find the exceptions for the state of Georgia, I went to the Secretary of State's website again um, for the state of Georgia, and I went to the area where it, they talk about professional uh, engineers and land surveyors, and I went down to section 431529, uh, which actually talks about the exceptions uh, or the exceptions to the operation of charter. And so if you look down here, uh, these are the individuals who do who are exempt from the chapters or from this chapter, which means these are the people who are exempt. They don't have to follow uh, or they don't have to become licensed. OK. And so if you look down here, it has, for instance, individuals that are working for an employee or a subordinate. Uh, working as an employee or they are subordinate of an individual holding a certificate, meaning they have a license. Those individuals don't need to be licensed. Um, officers or employees of government uh, of the United States don't need to be licensed. All executive, um, or oh, pardon me, all elective officers of the political subdivision of the state don't need to be. Uh, officers and employees of the Department of Transportation don't need to be. Any defense, aviation, space, or aerospace company, um, as long as the individuals within those companies fit this uh, description here, they don't need to be. And if we continue to go down here, oops, let's do that again. If we continue to go down here, um, an employee contractor, contract worker, uh, subcontractor, independent contractor who works for defense, they don't, uh, defense aviation space and aerospace, they also don't need to be licensed. And uh, any officer or employee of a state government uh, agency or department, so on and so forth, you can read through that, they don't need to be licensed. And then 
uh, there's also exceptions when it comes to individuals that are working for uh, large companies that are actually manufacturing products and in the case of Joseph David he actually is not uh, he doesn't that fall under this case so again he has uh, issues when it comes to that okay so what should you learn from this video well first if you are not exempted by your state or u.s territory and of course if you don't have a license do not represent yourself as an engineer professionally second if you are not exempted by your state or territory or u.s territory and again and you do not um, have a license do not make statements or practice as an engineer third present yourself or present an employee to the public as an engineer in cases where an engineering license is required can lead to great embarrassment for your company fourth present yourself as an engineer could be costly now the case itself here has not gone to court but you can imagine that the management company will end up having to spend some money to defend themselves in this case um, against the class action or it, in the, 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 the fourth presenting yourself as an engineer could be costly now this case has not made its way to a court yet however you may imagine that the engineer or pardon me the quote-unquote chief engineer and the company are gonna have to you know defend themselves and if they're gonna have to defend themselves they're gonna have to pay in order to defend themselves in addition to which or in addition to that I should say what happens here is that the company um, or the engineer may end up being fined for representing um, this individual as an engineer and again I say may that's all according to um, the board the engineering board uh, in the state of Georgia now if you don't believe that this stuff can get really expensive uh, as it pertains uh, to the fines that a board a state board may um, put on the in this case the uh, defendants I want you to take a look or do a Google search for this case here it's uh, for a case for a man in Oregon and if you just do a Google search I'm not even going to tell you what it's about just do a Google search Oregon man fined for engineering without a license okay it's a real interesting case now I'm not saying I agree with what the Oregon board did I'm just saying it's an interesting case and this is why I'm saying it could end up costing um, the individuals uh, in this case the defendants in this case uh, some serious money all right fourth presenting yourself as an engineer could be costly now this case has not made its way to a court yet however you may imagine that the engineer or pardon me the quote-unquote chief engineer and the company are gonna have to you know defend themselves and if they're gonna have to defend themselves they're gonna have to pay in order to defend themselves in addition to which or in addition to that I should say what happens here is that the company um, or the engineer may end up being fined for representing um, this individual as an engineer and again I say may that's all according to um, the board the engineering board uh, in the state of Georgia now if you don't believe that this stuff can get really expensive uh, as it pertains uh, to the fines that a board a state board may um, put on the in this case the uh, defendants I want you to take a look or do a Google search for this case here it's uh, for a case for a man in Oregon 
And if you just do a Google search, I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. Just do a Google search, Oregon man fined for engineering without a license. Okay. It's a real interesting case. Now, I'm not saying I agree with what the Oregon board did. I'm just saying it's an interesting case. And this is why I'm saying it could end up costing um, the individuals, uh, in this case, the defendants, in this case, uh, some serious money.